<sighs> Feels nice to be so free, doesn't it? Hello there, friends, and welcome back to more Final Fantasy VI. Last time, we found out the truth about Terra's origins and the Espers themselves, and got access to our very own airship, the Blackjack. We also talked a little bit about Terra, and we now also know our next destination. However, we aren't going to be dealing with the Espers or the Empire today. Instead, we're going to be flying around a little bit and heading straight back to Narsh, as we do have a little bit of unfinished business there um, from before, uh, before I left. So I want to go ahead and take care of this now. First things first, I want to note, I'm um, gonna turn off encounters, is that I have removed sensor from my party. I gotta make sure that someone's here to pilot the airship. Um, and we're going to we're gonna go ahead and head into Narsh as a group of three, as a as a trio. And we're gonna go ahead and move around here. There was one room I did not go uh, that I did not check on our uh, return visit back to Narsh, and I wanted to go ahead and check that out. Ah, caught in the act. Oh. Hello. Hey, 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 hey. Empty. This was this treasure chest was had something in it earlier. Hey, 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 give me that back. I'm Lone Wolf the Pickpocket. This treasure's mine now. Get... Sir, this is a 2D game. How dare you uh, access the... Uh, I don't know. Th third dimension? God! I guess this means Lone Wolf is the strongest character in this universe because he can use the third dimension. Where'd he go? Uh... Oh, thank you for showcasing where you where you are, and he disappeared. Hmm. Let's go ahead and chase him down. I want to see whatever was in that locked chest. Come on. Dude, persistent, aren't you? Uh, okay, whatever. Tara, why can't you jump super high? Go, turn into an Esper and just fly. Uh, okay, well, that leads us to where Val uh, where the Esper was. We don't want to worry about that, so let's go ahead and head, o head over this way, which... Um, if memory serves, we actually haven't been over here in this segment of Narsh Mines, so this is something new. Come on, get on the bridge there. This this area of Narsh Mines actually leads to the top where we defended Bannon against Kefka, so it's nice to be able to see this. But we're not worrying about reminiscing, we're trying to steal some items back. Yeah, here we go, gotta deal with this maze here. This bucket is still here, interesting. Stay point's gone, though. Alright, I, I can see on the mini-map, Lone Wolf, you have nowhere left to run. Exactly, you seem to be, pan to be panicking yourself. Moogle, no! That's far enough. Come one step closer and the Moogle gets it. Uh, you strike a hard bargain, Lone Wolf. Just you wait until I get my hands on you. Koopo. Ugh, got a wild one. Hold still, you little... Uh! You'll never get this gold hairpin. We can help out Lone Wolf here and maybe steal his gold hairpin, but I think it'd be best if we help out this Moogle. Thanks, Kubo. You can talk? A Moogle who speaks the language of humans and can summon the Earth's power through his dance. We know him already, and we love him too, Mog. I always assumed that this Moogle, and spe uh, specifically Mog, doesn't speak with like a super high pitch, high pitched voice, and instead has like kind of that Brooklyn accent, you know. So I'm gonna be doing my best to do that instead. I think it makes for a more fun character. An old dude named Ramu taught me your language, Koopo. He kept showing up in my dreams and telling me to help you, Koopo. So I'm gonna help you, Koopo. Mm, if that's how it's gonna be, then take this! Oh dear. I'll wait for you in the airship, Koopo. You could just join my part. I, I have an empty. Sl uh, uh, I thought he would join my party if I had an empty slot. Uh, I'm not gonna go and mess with that Esper over there. The last time we did that, Terra kind of went a little cuckoo. Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and see you back at the Blackjack so we can put Mog in our party. I have a lot to say about this guy. 
I guess just so you know, I am not a professional voice actor and not very good at accents. I'm not from Brooklyn myself, so my Brooklyn accent may not be exactly on par, so I'm gonna be trying to minimize that, but I'm not gonna be doing a high-pitched voice for Mog. <laughs> but speaking of Mog, we're actually gonna go ahead and put him in our party along with Cayenne and Gao, for reasons we'll see in just a second. Uh, but M Mog is sort of going to be the centerpiece of today's video. I know, Setzer, you'll get your time to shine in a second, but we have a few bigger fish to fry. So let's go ahead and look at Mog. Now, Mog comes with nothing. You know what that is? Because we took everything from him during the lock segment. So, of course, he has nothing here. So we're gonna go ahead and outfit him with stuff. I guess... Generally speaking, at least right now, what you have on him in terms of armor really isn't that important. Uh, but for right now, let's go ahead and give him some evasion gear. Uh, let's give him a silk rope. Yeah, the magic increase is going to be pretty good here. He starts out with pretty decent magic, and we're going to be boosting that with the earrings. For, again, reasons we'll see here later. We're going to go ahead and put him in the back row, as he will not be using physical attacks right now. Uh, Mog is proficient in spears, as we see here, similar to Edgar, which also makes him a pretty, uh, good use user of the Dragoon Boots if you want to go ahead and set him as a jump attacker. But for right now, that isn't really that necessary, so I'm not going to be worrying about it. We go down here and heal him up as he is uh, a little low on HP. There we go. All the added gear boosts some teeny bit. Uh, but Mog has a unique ability, Dance. Now, we actually already have one of these dances, thanks to, again, the Defending Terra with Lock segment very early on in the game, Twilight Requiem, which calls upon the power of darkness to attack enemies. Dances are something that I'm going to get into very soon, but something that is very, very important to note is that you can obtain dances from completing battles in certain environments which is exactly what we're going to be tackling today. I'm going to be going around and attempting to grab every single dance that I can by going to each major biome and uh, doing at least one fight in there. So probably the most obvious place to begin is right here next to Figaro, as we have access to grasslands and deserts, which are technically two different biomes, along with forests. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take down three birds with one stone, starting with forests. Again, we don't need to do anything special in combat. Even if Mog is KO'd, he still counts as uh, getting the uh, credit for the encounter, so we're just going to worry about winning the encounter, and that's about it. We do have Twilight Requiem here, which we're going to see if we can activate that. If you were not on the biome that, that, that uh, the dance is based around, so, for example, caves for Twilight Requiem, uh, there's a 50% chance that Mog will fail his dance. Again, I'll get into that a little bit more in a second. But there's Forest Nocturne from the Forests. Calls upon the power of the Forest to attack enemies and cure allies' status ailments. Then we have the Grasslands next. Forest Nocturne isn't too great. Every single dance has a set amount of abilities. And they range from really good to not great, if we can even get the dance to work. Uh, I guess we've, we haven't really seen a lot of the other abilities that Gao can use, so let's go ahead and see what the Chaser can do. Why not? This is one of the newer ones, while we try to get this dance. So it seems like Chaser gives uh, Gao Float and also pl the access, access to Plasma, which is pretty good magic deck. Mog, can you not? Uh, as you can see, dances are a little fickle, especially um, if you're not in the biome that they're associated with. Maybe uh, Mog is gonna take care of every. Uh, Gao is gonna take care of everything before we can even deal with the dances. I, <laughs> I didn't mean to drain heal that enemy there. Uh, but on the grasslands, we learned Wind Rhapsody, which is a personal favorite of mine. Not the best to dance, but it has a pretty decent set of abilities. Then we've, if we go to the desert here, we have another dance to learn. There's the Sand Ray. I guess we can go ahead and see the Afloat from the Chaser continues on to other combat encounters. Let's try the Megalodoth. Why not? And then we try Dance again. Let's do Wind Rhapsody. 
there is uh, something really unique about uh, dances that I want to try to show off. Hey, there we go. The dance worked. Whenever you use the dance, the biome that it's associated with, it'll be changed to that biome, the background. And it's uh, it'll stay that way for the remainder of the encounter. If you use dances, Mog becomes uh, uncontrollable for the until he's either downed or combat ends, and he'll do a certain amount of attacks with his dances. Uh, but again, we'll be going into that in just a second. So, there is a specific biome that requires a little bit of maneuvering in order to obtain, and that is the water biome. Now, we've already seen a few water areas, the main one being the Serpent Trench, so we're going to have to kind of do a little bit of neandering in order to actually get back to the Serpent Trench without removing us from the airship Blackjack. So, it's best to go ahead and walk through Mount Colts, as there is also a dance to learn here, as it is in mountain range. Uh, so go ahead and set up an auto battle or something here. I'm gonna just try and do some more dances, and with Terra, I mean, I'll cast fire or something. But we're gonna go ahead and just try to auto battle this. Fail the Wind Rhapsody, it's okay. Um, but generally, we're going to go through Mount Colts, and then we're going to head to the Returner's Camp, go through the Leth River, Head down to the Phantom Forest, and then we are going to uh, jump across the waterfall into uh, the Velt, head through the Serpent Trench, head to, uh, it would be Nakea, if I remember correctly, is the village after the Serpent Trench. Take the ship from Nakea back to South Figaro, where our airship lies. It's a little bit of a trip, but it's probably the best way for us to get uh, uh, most of the dance dances in one fell swoop. There is still a f uh, one more dance outside of this trip that we need to take care of, but I want to go ahead and get this big one out of the way now. And while I do this, while I walk through the mountain range and head our, head our way to the Serpent Trench, I want to go ahead and talk about Mog in a bit more detail as he fails to keep dancing. So let's go ahead and do that. The iconic Final Fantasy mascot has a representative in this game, and boy is he an interesting one indeed. Starting off by looking at his stats, Mog is unlike any other party member we've come across so far. The quality of his stats seem very off at first glance, from having abysmal strength, though conversely having a wonderful attack stat, or the fact that Mog, due to his stature, one would assume that he wouldn't be able to take a hit, when that couldn't be further from the truth. And this extends into Mog's weapon of choice, the Spear, which is very uncommon to see a specialist for in Final Fantasy VI. This means that if you want Mog to perform well in the conventional damage department, slotting him as the party's go-to jump attacker would be the way to go thanks to the damage bonus granted by Spears when jumping. Mog's choice of defensive equipment is also quite interesting, as he can wear certain pieces of heavy armor, granting him more defense, while also having powerful gear that is exclusive to him. And seeing how his dance ability works, you might even see yourself changing out Mog's weapons and armor around quite frequently to adjust to your surroundings. Generally speaking, Mog's role in the party really comes down to whether or not you are willing to play ball, so to speak, with his abilities and gear options, as they are definitely more of a factor than other characters. When discussing stat bonuses for Magicite, Mog is one of those characters that can't really go wrong with any of them. If you intend for him to become a jump specialist, then strength should be your primary focus, but otherwise you are sort of free to build him as you choose. Relics are also pretty straightforward. Dragoon Boots and Horn for a jump setup is an obvious choice, with the Earrings and Hero's Ring being good options for when Mog wants to dance. Equipping the Zephyr Cloak can't hurt either, as it'll make the little guy take even longer to take down. Now let's move on to talking about Mog's special ability, Dance. Dancing allows Mog to access a series of special moves that are themed around the type of dance Mog is currently doing, ranging from powerful single-target attacks, ailment cleansing effects, to strong party-wide healing spells. When dancing, Mog cannot be normally controlled, similar to when Gao is under the effect of rage, so you need to be sure of which dance you want Mog to perform before you dedicate him to doing it until combat ends or he's KO'd. 
Each dance can be acquired by finishing battles while in different terrain with Mog in your party. Every time Mog tries to begin a dance, there is a 50% chance of failure. However, if Mog performs a dance that complements the terrain it hails from, the dance will never fail to begin. And as stated earlier, once a dance has begun, Mog will not stop. Now there's quite a selection of dances to choose from, but honestly, they're all at least somewhat decent. There aren't really any bad ones in my personal opinion, but without going into too much detail, generally matching Mog's dances to the terrain you're battling in is a good idea. Though, if you're running into problems with enemies absorbing Mog's dance damage, or his dances just aren't cutting it, the dance Water Harmony or Wind Rhapsody are generally going to be your best choices, since they both have strong party-wide healing spells and pretty good damage output. Overall though, if dancing isn't cutting it at all, Mog can perform just as fine as a Dragoon, jumping onto enemies and dealing a pretty good chunk of damage throughout the entirety of the game. Though this is to say that Mog has no shortage of options when it comes to fitting into a party, so just go with what works and have at it. Yeah, Mog is quite interesting, isn't he? He's uh, definitely a little bit more complex than some of the other recent characters we've talked about, but... Uh, as we traveled across the left river, we obtained the dance... Water Harmony. Calls upon the power of the sea to heal allies and cure them of status ailments, plus deals some pretty decent damage uh, against enemies weak to water. This is probably the best dance that Mog has access to, so make sure to go ahead and grab it, as this will become unatta unattainable after a certain point in the game. Um, but the thing is... That's really the main thing that we sail across the left river again for. And unfortunately, we can't exactly call up Setzer to come and pick us up. The airship, the Blackjack, is in South Figaro. So yeah, we do have to follow the trace of uh, steps of Sabin and go back the long way, as I said earlier. So we've got to make our way to the Phantom Forest, we've got to then walk back over to the Velt, head over to the Serpent, Serpent Trench, and you know the gist from there. Thankfully, we do not have to go through the nightmare that was uh, trying to traverse the Phantom Train, as uh, we don't want to deal with that again. In fact, it's the Phantom Forest is a very simple, just follow the arrow signs, and you're out. Don't need to worry about the Phantom Train whatsoever. So then we can just walk up and be on our way. Now, I actually want to go ahead and talk about Mog a little bit as we walk back to our airship the long way around. So, I was not old enough to be around for the marketing of Final Fantasy VI. It, this game is definitely a bit older than I am. However, I have seen some of the marketing for Final Fantasy VI, and whenever I was exposed to Final Fantasy VI due to the box art of the SNES version, Final Fantasy III, I used to always think that Mog was the main character, and also just due to his unique stature amongst the rest of the cast and uh, interesting abilities, he was always a character that stood out to me and was a personal favorite. So, I have a lot of, uh, I always used to joke around with friends and family that, you know, Mog is kind of the, the, kind of the main character for me, so to speak. I even have done a full playthrough of the game where it was literally just Mog. I literally played through the entire game fighting, well, up to this point, obviously, without Mog. Um, but I played through the entire game after this point with just Mog, just to prove that I could do it. I, I just enjoyed playing around with Mog and thought he was really fun to showcase just how powerful he could really be. Any character in this game can be super powerful as long as you invest enough in them. But Mog was a particular case for me. Now, while I don't intend to make him a death machine in this playthrough, as I kind of want to make sure other characters do get some time in the spotlight, um, <laughs> if there's a little bit of bias shown to Mog, this is probably why. He's not my number one favorite character in this game anymore. That definitely goes to the uh, brothers, the, uh, the Edgar and Saban. But uh, Mog is still up there for me as a personal favorite, and... I'm definitely going to be showing him quite a bit of love. You know, if Moogles are supposed to be so cute and cuddly and totally not harmful, the advertisements for Mog for Final Fantasy VI, well, for the West Final Fantasy III, 
didn't really do much to help that. The the advertisements for the West definitely showcased the Mog as being more of a tough, sturdy guy who just happens to be small, and you shouldn't underestimate him. And he's got he's got this deep voice, you know. It reminds me a lot of the um, the Kirby ads for some of the older Kirby games here in the West as well. They showed him to be a rough and tough guy that uh, could take on any obstacle. When in reality, he's just kind of a cute puffball that just so happens to be a massive weapon of destruction. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the the dichotomy that that represents Mog is definitely a uh, fun little thing that I like to uh, point out. It's also why I usually tend to think that he doesn't actually have a, de uh, a like a light chipper voice, more of a deep voice. But I mean, that's up to interpretation. That's one of the unique things that uh, a game that lacks voice acting. Uh, allows you to do. It allows you to use your imagination on how they are voiced. Now, obviously, I don't ever think that these characters all sound just like variations of me, um, but I do think that um, it is really nice to be able to sort of express the characters in your own way, even if, you know, your voice isn't all that great for this. I don't even need to hang around here in the city. I'm just going to immediately go to South Big Row, so I am as close to the Blackjack as possible. Back here at South Big Row, there's actually a little bit of unique dialogue. The town's crawling with Imperial troops. Gotta slip through without being seen. Uh, because, um, uh, <laughs> Figaro is still occupied by the Empire, we have to be smuggled through the city, which is a nice little touch. Thankfully, Mog seems to be able to fit into that chest, but I don't know where the other three went. That must have been a very tight snug. <laughs> or maybe they did, they got us out individually, who knows. But anyway, we're back here at South Figaro with the Blackjack, but we're not done today just yet, as there is one more dance that we can get before we head out for today. We have the Twilight Requiem, uh, Wind Rhapsody, Forest Nocturne, the Desert Lullaby, and uh, Earth Blues, and Water Harmony. However, there is one more, and that is, if I can figure out where it is on the minimap, is over here. Zozo, this is going to be the best place we can get it. There is a, there is a dance based on indoor areas like Zozo, or um, if we could still fight there, it would South Figaro would also give us this dance. So we're going to try and look for that here. Don't want to stay here any longer than I have to. Of course, it's a hill gigas. I wish I had Locke with me. I would try to steal from him again. Let's go ahead and see if we can do this water harmony. Come on. Yes, apparition. We change the background. Let's go ahead and rage and do... Let's do Magitek armor, maybe. <laughs> he confused him. It always... I don't know. It, that just seems to be happening. I'm not, I'm not doing that on purpose. El Nino. Pretty powerful ability here. Water Harmony is going to be a very useful ability here. El Nino does a lot of damage. Um, and thankfully, since it's magic, it doesn't ruin the Confuse. So we can just kind of hit the boss. Well, I guess he's not really a boss. Oh, Terra's showing off her magic prowess. She learned a bunch of Tier 2 attack magic thanks to her uh, Esper Magicite stuff for, from our... Uh, Father Maduin. Hey, there it is. Love Serenade. But yeah, with all of Mog's dances now acquired, we have seven of them in total. There is one more we can get, but not right now. It is going to be a available later. Uh, we are pretty decked out with Mog, and he is ready to become a powerful member of our team. So... For right now, we're going to go ahead and leave off there. But next time on Final Fantasy VI, there's still more to do before we head out towards the Esper's Cave. So next time on Final Fantasy VI, it's your turn, buddy. We're going to be going and seeing what else there is to do around the world while we also talk about Setzer. So with that said, I'll see you soon.